After Isigi made Kaiser look like a clown at the end of the Manshine City game with the help of Yukimiya, Kaiser finally takes Isigi seriously and issues a challenge to him. We are both strikers. Let's see who score more goals, Yoichi. This was Kaiser's bet, which he stated while looking very infuriated and was close to crushing poor Ness's head. With this, it is set in stone. Isigi vs Kaiser, the adaptability demon vs the emperor. And what a better setting for this showdown than the Italian Colosseum, where Bastard Munich meets Ubers in the 5th Neo Egoist League game. To fully explore this tale of the Naked Emperor, I am going to go about it movie-like, with three main acts. The first act is Isigi's rise, second is Kaiser's desperation, and finally the dethroning act. Before we do however, if you find this video enjoyable, Please consider subscribing and joining my community discord server for more amazing blue lock theories and reviews. And so without any further ado, on with the video. The match has just started and it's Bastard's ball. Kaiser kicks things off with a pass to Ness. And behind this easy Kiho from the start is using Metavision to hunt for any opportunity to score. After passing few players with a 1-2, Ness lets the ball go to Grimm on the side and dashes forward to the penalty box. Grimm goes for a cross, but Ness was just a bait, as we see Kaiser is behind, with Nico on him. However, it doesn't seem that Nico has the physical strength to win this duel, and here we get introduced to Don Lorenzo, the best U20 defender and one of our leading actors in Isigi's orchestra to dethrone the German Emperor. Now from this one attack, we immediately notice how Kaiser is not his playful self that we have seen in the previous two games, acting cocky and irrational. This time, in order to win his bet, every move Kaiser makes is calculated, he is aiming for the kill. In any case, the first act in Isigi's orchestra started when Lorenzo took the ball easily from Kaiser. He then continued his incredible first impression and introduction with a swift counter, destroying Bastard completely, and showing us off the new deadly dribbling technique, the zombie steps. Now, while Kaiser did not bother to get back to defense, Isigi was lurking and aiming to kill Uber's attack at the most critical point. For this, he started by noticing that everyone was focusing on stopping Lorenzo, but no one has covered Baro who was on the right. Isigi anticipated that the final pass will be coming towards the king, and so he was there stealing it and stopping Uber's attack completely. This marks the first point in today's conversation. Isigi is a team player. Despite being very egotistical and always searching for his own goal, Isigi has no issue playing for the team if it is the most rational path, whether be it playing on defense or even for the sake of other people's goals, like we've seen with Yuki and Kunigami. Isigi understands through egocentrism that helping the team will allow you to create chemical reactions with them, which opens up new opportunities for you to score, taking Yuki again as an example. And this actually plays into a bigger point which I will cover later, so please keep this in mind. Going back to the game, after Isigi stole the ball, Kuruna immediately comes to him to capitalize on the fact that Lorenzo is so high up. They then execute a quick counter with Kaiser monitoring them from behind. However, Lorenzo once again comes to Kaiser and tells him to give up any ideas he has as he is under lockdown. Isigi notices this and immediately takes the counter's speed to a higher gear to again capitalize on the situation. But it wasn't just Isigi who noticed this. Nico read the same thing. And so him and Aiko close the gap down the middle to slow the counter and give Lorenzo and the rest of the team time to catch up. However, Isigi was a step ahead. Having studied Uber's designs, he sped up even more, countering their plan completely, leaving Uber's in a state of panic as he immediately shattered their design. This is rather impressive. We've always been aware of Isigi's adaptability and how it is his greatest weapon. But after unlocking Metavision, it would seem he took it to a whole new level as now he does not need to stop, read the situation and then act accordingly. Rather, with Metavision, he's constantly monitoring his surroundings and adapting his plays to deal with the situation at hand on the fly. And here, Isigi goes between Nico and Aiko as Corona lobs the ball above them, and with Aryo being on Kunigami, Isigi in a 1v1 situation with the goalkeeper. Or so he thought. With Kaiser being under lockdown, Ness takes his mantle and comes to the most critical point in Isigi's plan and physically engage him. But Metavision is just broken. Isigi has already seen Ness coming and positioned himself on the right of the ball, knowing that Ness will try to stop his righty direct shot. But he couldn't have known about Isigi's new secondary weapon, as he puts his right hand on Ness to balance himself and with a lefty shot he scores an amazing goal. 
and show the world the birth of the true striker, Isigi Yoichi. With this, the first act is complete. Bastard Emperor has failed, but Yoichi was their savior and rose as a candidate to be this game's hero. Also, I think this puts him at the door of the new Gen's 11 level, which is something that became very apparent to Kaiser and leads us straight to the second act, Kaiser's Desperation. After Isigi's goal and with Lorenzo haunting him, Kaiser senses the danger emanating as he is getting closer to losing the bet, especially with Uber scoring a well-constructed goal. The game could go either way very quickly. As such, he approaches Ness, who is freaking out, and tells him that what they need to do is beat Lorenzo, then scoring would be easy. And so the German duo embark on a journey to beat the Italian Don in a 2v1 duel, which is something interesting, he did not want to face Lorenzo alone, he actually chose to be helped by Ness. In any case, beating Lorenzo was something they were successful at. With Ness holding Lorenzo, Kaiser used his high speed to cut a long distance, putting him near his range. This obviously would not work if Ness wasn't the amazing passer that he is, as we see him flick the ball very high to reach Kaiser despite being pressed by Lorenzo. However, Ubers this time were a step ahead, having a dedicated player being assigned with squash and flies. Ness's ball was very easily stopped by the stylish king Aryu. Yet, he wasn't the only one who saw this. In fact, Isigi anticipated it and when Aryu blocked the ball, Isigi beat everyone to it. Nico all of a sudden explodes into the scene as he was watching Isigi's moves very carefully and the ball goes to a touch for Bastard. Nico aside, this tactical move by Isigi serves two purposes. First, it is official. Isigi's vision is broader and overall better than that of Kaiser's. As he himself said, my meta vision is superior, while commenting on how he saw through Kaiser and Ness's play as well as Aryu's counter. This is a confirmation on my comment in the first act, of how he is officially knocking on the door of the new Gen 11. Second, and more importantly, from Kaiser's perspective, Isiki is picking up his slacks and straight up correcting his mistakes by regaining possession of the ball after he lost it. For a player as prideful as Kaiser, this must have been very infuriating. This coupled with the fact that he is unable to win versus Lorenzo must be pressing him very badly. And this actually brings us to talk about something that I've always found to be fascinating about Kaiser, which is how he reacts calmly to everything. Even when issuing his bet after Isigi called him a clown, he was able to control his temper. And this time, it's no different. While Ness came running to him horrified due to their backs being pushed against the wall, Kaiser immediately shut him up and told him not to let his brain lose control. Just have faith, nothing is impossible for me. These were Kaiser's words as he gets super hyped for what's next. But despite looking like he is in total control, Kaiser here is actually in a state of desperation. To prove this, I would like to take you guys back to Kaiser's monologue moments ago before being interrupted by Ness. Kaiser comments on how annoying Lorenzo has been with his lockdown and how he isn't having enough freedom as usual. He also states how Isigi is having a better time in this, and I quote, garbage environment. He then strangely says, to steal a goal, I need to, before Ness interrupts him. He didn't say score, he specifically said to steal a goal. This means Kaiser realized that with these predicaments, he is losing the bet and might be forced to feed off Isigi's plays for now. In a world where only results matter, this might be the best option for now. But this is strange. Is his bet with Isigi worth more than his pride? Or is it the opposite? Does his prideful mind does not accept the idea of being defeated? But he is running away from facing Lorenzo head on. Is Kaiser getting this desperate? Well, at first it seemed that he will still try one more time. But after Kunigami stole the ball from Ness, Kaiser gave up on doing things his way and started monitoring Isigi believing that he will create an opportunity in which he can steal the ball and score. Back to Kunigami, and despite his valiant efforts, he was reaching a dead end, especially with Nico and his metavision, as he can simply target the moment Kunigami slips past Barone and Reiko. This is possible due to Kunigami's lone wolf mentality of not accepting passes or giving them, but Isiki is not just about to let that fly, and so he designed a plan to counter Nico by capitalizing on the fact that Nico's vision is still not yet fully developed and he still doesn't know about the importance of moving your head in all directions to widen your perception. Isigi moved to the middle to allow Raichi to get out of Nico's field of vision from the right. And he was successful. Nico was left to battle Raichi while Isigi easily stole the ball. As usual, Corona was beside Isigi and with a simple 1-2 and a brilliant footwork, they got past Aryu, the final defender. 
and even flexed a little bit by lobbing the ball over him, destroying his weapon completely. I actually want to note here, it seems that Isiki only steals the ball from his teammates when they lose it, unlike Kunigami and Kaiser. In any case, Aiko comes at the last moment and reveals that he too has metavision, and that he was able to read Isiki's plan from the start. Isiki tries to bluff with his lefty shot like Kunigami did moments ago, but we are already familiar with Aiko's analytical eye, and so he again saw through Isiki's plan and rushed to him to take the ball. When all hope seemed lost, Yuki shows up at the other end of the penalty box, asking for the ball. Pass to the sinking ship, Yuki said. This being the most rational play, and better than losing the ball, Isigi again was a team player and passed the ball to Yuki. But all of a sudden Lorenzo comes up and covers Yuki having seen him free. Lorenzo here was put in a situation where he needed to choose between a bad and a worse choice. Should he leave Kaiser's side knowing his level of danger, or let Yuki be free, especially after he's shown his ability to score in the Manshine City game. Logically speaking, Yuki is the most dangerous situation, and so he covered it. However, Kaiser has metavision and he was able to see the whole play, so he positioned himself in a way that if Lorenzo ever goes to Yuki, there is no way he can keep Kaiser on a leash as well. And so when he did, Kaiser intercepted the ball, saying I finally shook you off you rotten gold tooth, with his eyes shining with the flow state pattern. Kaiser then shows us why he is still in Gen 11, and forces an insane goal, and probably the best goal in the series so far. After intercepting the pass, he went into his shooting motion, but Sendo came to block his shot, yet Metavision again proves OP, as he already saw him, and lifts the ball. However, this gave time for Aryu to tackle him mid-air, and for Aiko to come up from the left and cover his short course. But the other type of vision, the Predator Eyes, proved supreme as well. In an instant, Kaiser found a narrow path amidst all the chaos, and was able to force a goal through a Kaiser Impact Ricochet Nutmeg shot that left everyone speechless. A world-class goal indeed. Ness witnessing greatness before him comes to celebrate with his friend, gliding, smiling and telling everyone to witness the great Kaiser, and how he took Isigi's plan and turned it around its head to steal a super goal. But as I stated earlier, for a prideful person such as Kaiser, this is the worst type of goal to score, as it was born out of desperation and his failure to beat Lorenzo on his own. The fact that he needed Isigi and Yuki's help to be able to break the Dawn's lockdown speaks value to who is the stronger new Gen 11. The fact that the Emperor himself is pushed this hard against the wall is shameful, but the one thing Kaiser can't do is lose the bet he set out. From Isigi's perspective, however, things are rather interesting. Even though Kaiser stole his hard work, the fact of the matter remains that Isigi is still this game's eye of the storm. The desperation he is feeling from Kaiser is a proof that he has fully infiltrated his brain. The Emperor now needs to account for Isigi before making any move. After Kaiser's goal, the Masters joined the game, and honestly Uber's violated bastard for the full length of the star change in system 3 minutes. Few things to note here before we delve into the third act. Baro scores a world-class goal, beating both Kaiser and Isigi in a 2v1 situation, and officially enters the new Gen 11 level. If Isigi is at the door, Baro is officially at their level. Second, and more importantly to our story, after witnessing the level at which Snuffy operates firsthand, and how even Metavision is not enough, Isigi in total contrast to Kaiser actually adapted, and came up with a plan to further increase his control of the field. Thinking of Raichi's endurance, Isigi went to him and presented his plan. For Raichi to rise as a star midfielder, he needs to form a constant barrier in front of Snuffy, and lowers his options. This way, Isigi's vision and mind can catch up to those of Marks, even for a few minutes. Obviously the plan failed, as Snuffy is just built different, but the main take from this is how Isigi elevated Raichi's play and style, and gave himself an ally that will help him at the same time. This takes us back to the point I alluded to in the first act, how Isigi plays for the team in his own way. But to expand on it, Isigi is not just a simple team player, he does more, he elevates his teammates with him. He constantly puts rational expectations on them to allow them to improve and shine, something Kaiser fails miserably at, due to him thinking he is above everyone else. This is actually very important as Isigi is slowly taking over Bastard, first Corona, then Gagamaru, then Yuki, and now Raichi. And his next ally is a player that I would like to introduce as he is the final main character of our tale, Hiyori. 
Throughout the game so far, Hiyori has been paying close attention to Isigi. He is monitoring and even understanding every play Isigi makes, and is having a full grasp of what he is doing, a feat that can only be achieved by someone with the same level of vision as Isigi or even higher. This was clearly apparent in Chapter 225. After Aiko tackled Noah, Yuki and Isigi carried on with their counter. Yuki used his dribbling technique to draw Abdi and Lorenzo who was still on Kaiser to him, while Isigi threw Aryu with his off-the-ball movements and was free in the penalty box, or so he thought again, as Snuffy was able to easily read the situation. And because Snuffy was there, Isigi needed a swift pass to his feet so he can shoot immediately. However, Yuki having seen Corona's plays before, did what he was doing and lobbed the ball above them. Seeing this pass from Yuki, both Isigi and Hiyori determined that it is no good. A lob is too slow. This 0.5 second delay was all Snuffy needed to clear the ball, counter and enable Baro to score his super goal. Hiyori being able to see this means that Isigi can have a second ally that can embody his goal vision effortlessly and help him score. But having said that, we now reach the third and final act in our tale, the dethroning. We start this act right after Baro's equalizer. Isigi is desperate as Baro has achieved the thing he failed at. There is sharing his goal image with his teammates. It then hits him. Hiyori has always been the guy to understand Isigi's motives, plans and vision clearly. So he ran to Noah asking him to sub Hiyori instead of Kiyora. They both tried really hard to convince Noah that Hiyori is the better fit. And he agreed after a long argument. On the flip side, Kaiser approaches Ness and tells him their plan. Which is shocking to say the least and out of character for him. He says and I quote, Take a good look. In every contest, there is an opening. Whatever that shitty red gorilla is thinking, Yoichi will try to outwit him. We will use that. We are going to fuck him up, Ness. Are you ready? So, it seems much like Isigi, Kaiser is too very shook by Baro's goal. Not just the goal, but the fact that Ubers now are all behind Baro. And to make things worse, he sees how Isigi has acquired a new piece to help him, which is bad news. At this rate, it's either Bastard's loss if Baro scores, or Kaiser's loss if Isigi scores, which is bad all around if he doesn't do something. But with Lorenzo still mandating his lockdown on him, things have never looked more grim for our Emperor, and he hits a new desperation level. He's no longer just trying to feed off Isigi's work, he actually aims to let Isigi fight Baro and Uber's head on, and then feed on the leftovers. Isn't this weird, guys? It's very uncanny for the new Gen 11 striker with all of his talent to be reduced to this level. Despite having the two most OP visions in football, the deadliest shot and the ideal speed, Kaiser is not trying to find a rational path into beating Lorenzo, rather he is relying too much on Ness. And if that does not work, he is trying to feed off the leftovers of Isigi vs Baro. Is this really the best U20 striker? For him to choose the easier path of stealing goals instead of dealing with the obstacle that is Lorenzo, it's just disappointing. In fact, this is a matter that Chris Prince of all people called Kaiser on. When they came face to face, Kaiser immediately passed to Ness. And there Chris said this. Hey now, are you running away? What a letdown, Kaiser. You act superior towards those below you, but like a differential coward to those above you. You are surprisingly pathetic, huh? This obviously infuriated Kaiser and he tried to cover it up. But we got a confirmation for this in chapter 207. As instead of trying to dethrone Noah as Bastard King, Kaiser chose to run away after going against him once. Just once. This is total opposite to Isigi who after witnessing the gap between him and the world's best, he decided to find an intermediate level that he focuses on before going after Noah. This led him to get two insane pieces, metavision and egocentrism, and he was able to improve exponentially, while Kaiser is still stagnated, frozen at his current level. This is just brilliant writing honestly, to have this glaring weakness of this arc's main antagonist dangled in front of us, and for it to come full circle and be Kaiser's downfall when he faced with a strong foe in Lorenzo. Sure he tried few times, but when he failed he stopped trying and ran away relying on Isiki. It would seem Kaiser really is a naked emperor. After all he is carried by his talent, but the moment he is challenged by an equal or superior player, he crumbles from an emperor to a coward. And with this, all that is left for him is to be dethroned by Isigi. For that to happen, we carry on with the game. It's the final kickoff. Ness passes the ball to Kaiser, and immediately Baro comes charging up. His hunger for the third goal is showing. Kaiser gives the ball back and advances. 
Here Ness really shows us why he is the beating heart of Bastard, as he takes 3 players with him before passing. Kaiser changes gears and advances really fast before Lorenzo comes to press him, passing Rico in the process. But here Ubers pulled a very vindictive design and tricked Kaiser's predator eyes by leaving a small opening from which he can score. Kaiser sees this and shoots, but it was a bait as a wild Lorenzo appears and stops the ball with his face. On the flip side, Isigi saw this coming as from his angle he can see Lorenzo clearly. But he lacks the physicality to get the ball as it was cleared by Aiko. And here Aiko's ball was snatched by Hiyori before Abdi can get it. However, Baro came rushing in calling Hiyori a benchwarming scrub. Then Nico linked up with him and snatched the ball. This ignited flames in Hiyori's heart as he never experienced football at this level and his ego soared high. After taking the ball back from Ubers, Isigi and Hiyori try their perfect coordination, but to their surprise, Kaiser read them. In what Isigi can only describe as a hyena striker, Kaiser is trying to smooch off of his and Hiyori's work, but Isigi won't give the ball that easily, and there they do a double shot. And even though it might seem that they are on par, this double shot tells a story of a fallen emperor whose time is almost up, and a rising star who is ready to take on the world. In any case, the shot gets blocked by Baro, and Isigi will have to construct the attack again. However, our MC is not that naive. From this plan, something is very clear. The way they are, him and Hiyori can never beat Kaiser and Baro. As despite their vision being superior, it is easy for the other strikers to read their moves. And so something needs to change. Something is missing. And there while Isigi was thinking this, Hiyori all of a sudden reflexively shot the ball, shocking everyone in the process. But to Isigi this was the light at the end of the tunnel as he finally has the final piece. And it's official, the stage for the dethroning is set. While Hiyori was lost because he was thinking he is not meant to play football, Isigi screams, one more time Hiyori, don't look, don't think, do it reflexively. This is Isigi's new plan, to detach his coordination with Hiyori, then they both rely on their meta vision to search for the most open space on the field and meet there and so they were set out on doing it. Hiyori has the ball and he draws as many players to him as possible with his dribbling, including Lorenzo. And with the lockdown being lifted up, Kaiser runs to the past trajectory, trying to intercept it. And here, Isigi has him looking like a clown. With a dumb look on his face, Kaiser realizes Isigi isn't waiting for a pass there, even though it looked that way. At the same time, Hiyori seems to be shooting, and in that momentary hesitation, Isigi slips to the left, to the opposite direction of Kaiser, Aiko, and Aryu. There, Hiyori without looking passed the ball, and they met in the most critical point behind the defense, all while having Kaiser looking like this. Isigi shoots, and it's a goal. The game is over. Isigi both won his bet and humiliated Kaiser, who was feeding off his leftovers. With this, Isigi finally reaches a new Gen 11 level, and Kaiser has been dethroned and the tale of the naked emperor is complete. Now I know this video is getting long, but one final thought. I think this is a seed for Kaiser's inevitable awakening in the PXG game, and I honestly can't wait to see a new and more OP version of him. I honestly think he will destroy both Rain and Isiki and be the emperor again, to hype him up as the menace that he is for the World Cups. So let me know if this topic interests you guys, and I will do a theory video on what we should expect from Kaiser going forward. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed and until next time, thank you for watching.